Hi, um, I thought I'd do a quick video on how to use Azalor if you've been trained on other types of botulinum toxin. Um, this can help you switch a little bit more seamlessly. So Azalor has been around for a very long time and it's a product I've had a lot of experience with because I used it for the first few years that I was injecting. Um, and it's a decent, reliable product. There are obviously um, quirks between different products and I'll come cover some of them for you today so that you can help make a decision. The main reason people switch to it, however, is because it's a cheaper product. Um, there are some good things about Azalor and it's useful in certain procedures uh, where it may be even better than um, other brands, but the key thing is just to be aware of some of the characteristics, particularly from a safety point of view, and in terms of the dosages and how to dilute the product so that you can use it. The first thing to think about with Azalor is the units. So the units are called Spaywood units and they are completely different to Allergan units. So units, um, when we refer to botulinum toxins, are basically referring to the amount of biological activity that the toxin has. They aren't actually referring to the weight or the mass or the volume of product, but more the degree of work it can do within the sphere that it does its job. So all of these toxins are measured in terms of biological activity or availability um, and with spaywood units is actually unfortunately de decided by um, treating population of genetically homogenous mice and it's the dose that kills 50% of that population is one unit. So one spaywood unit kills 50% of a population of gen genetically homogenous mice. Allergan who make Botox have a commitment not to do animal testing wherever possible and they've developed a cellular assay that doesn't involve treatment on animals if that's something that you care about in particular. So because Spaywood units are so different to Allergan units, you can see why you couldn't possibly s compare them directly. They're just measured in totally different ways. However, it is possible to develop a ratio that you can use in a practical everyday sense that allows you to switch between products. So this ratio has been debated and is roughly between 1 to 3 to 1.2.5 um, Allergan units to Spaywood units. So what I mean by that is if you were, if you were going to use one Allergan unit, you'd use 2.5 or 3 Spaywood units. So if we think about that in context, so the most common volume that you would, you would use in the labella or the crow's feet might be 4 units, and actually that works out as 10 units when you're using Azalor. So a 10 unit injection of Azalor where a 4 unit of Botox or Bocature might have been used. There isn't a need to be 100% accurate because there's a bit of leeway in the ratio. So if you're 2.5 or if you're 3, it doesn't make a huge difference. Um, it's just a guide because as we said, these, these volumes aren't directly correlatable anyway. There's a rough correlation that you can use. We'll provide a slide at the end of this video where you can see some, some suggested correlated doses for different areas of the face. So you'll see different doses that you use in the forehead, in the crow's feet, and in the frown lines so that you can get a rough idea what to use in each section. There are some clinical differences between Azalor and Botox which are worth knowing about. Um, the most significant of which, although this is still debated by the drug companies, is that Azalor does kick in quicker. Now I'm absolutely certain of this because when I switched product from Azalo to Botox, people did notice that it took an extra day or two to, to actually kick in. And if I switch back now, people will say, gosh, it really worked quickly. So two days in it was working. Now obviously that's a positive. Most people wanted to work as quickly as possible. Um, but there are some negatives as well. So um, one of the things is that it spreads a little bit further. Um, this is also debated. So a lot of people, um, usually the drug company that doesn't want it to be true, and will resist it and the one who does want it to be true will promote it. Um, but it does make sense that it spreads further because it's actually a slightly smaller molecule. So if you remember that from basic science, um, smaller molecules diffuse further um, and therefore it is probably a little bit less easy to control. This isn't really a significant difference in most parts of the face, but I do think if you're treating foreheads and you're trying to create an eyebrow lift, for example, eyebrow lifts uh, depend on the transition between treated and untreated muscle and that gradient is much more blended in with an azalor treatment so it therefore might look a little bit more natural but that also might come at the expense of being able to lift an eyebrow as well. The spread can be a benefit if you're doing a, a treatment that actually 
you want it to spread, so hyperhidrosis and the axilla, for example, it's no bad thing if it spreads a little bit because it's a very safe procedure, miles from anywhere, that's sensitive to Botox and it might mean that you need fewer injections to get the same result. It has been my experience that there were a couple of side effects that I tended to get slightly more often with Azalor than with Botox, but I wouldn't suggest this as a scientific insight because it really is just one person's opinion. Um, I think there were a few more cases of treatment failure, so those are people that at six weeks just tended to run out, so that did tend to happen more often than it seems to happen to me now that I use Botox almost exclusively. Um, and there's also, um, I had a couple of people getting kind of fasciculations or muscle twitches and spasms, um, which I haven't seen for a long time since I switched products. Um, neither of them are you know, big problems, and particularly the fasciculations are usually treatable. Either you do a top up or you switch to Botox and they go away. Um, they don't cause long-term problems, but it is an annoying thing to have uh, muscle twitching uh, that you've had injected. So that did tend to happen a few more times with Azalor. Um, I also think puffiness around the eyes was slightly more common. All of these side effects you can get with any product, um, but uh, it did seem to be slightly more often in the days I used Azalor. So that might be something that you, informs your decision as well. Let's have a look at how you would use this product when it arrives. So it, it arrives in a bottle that's just like a little 50 unit vial of Botox. 125 units is actually proportionally very similar to 50 units of Botox. And that's what you get when you order 125 units of Azalor. You'll also get, when it's sent out to you, a different syringe that you normally buy if you're using Botox or Bocature as your normal product. And it's a green syringe with special markings on it. Um, the reason for that is because it needs a, an odd number to dissolve the product. So it's 0.63 mils that you put into 125 units. When you look into the bottom of the vial, you'll see it's quite different to Botox or Bocature in that it has this white powder that you can clearly see, unlike Botox, which looks like there's nothing in it. And all you need to do is take your 0.63 mils of bacteriostatic or normal saline and dissolve it into this bottle. So this is your 0.63 mils of saline and all we do is inject this through the rubber bung into the vial of 125 units of Azalor um, and then we just roll it a few times so that it dissolves nicely and that is ready to use. So let's have a look at what it will look, actually look like in the syringe. If you're using um, Botox already and you're injecting four units, this is what you'd see in the syringe which is 10 insulin units on these little BD syringes. If you're using half mil BD syringes, it makes no difference, 10 is still 10 and that would be the with the Botox is 4 units but actually it works out as 20 units of Azalor so this would be quite a strong dose, in fact in terms of its clinical effect it would be twice as strong to use this much Azalor as it would be to use Botox. So this is the, the key difference with Azalor is for the same effect you're using half the volume. So remember that because that's what will get you through everyday practice much better than remembering the numbers and doing mathematics is that for the same effect you're using half as much product. So this is now the equivalent of four units of Botox, this is the equivalent of two units of Botox and this is the equivalent of one unit of Botox and you can see why that's a problem because that means when you're getting towards the smaller numbers you've got very little leeway. If you go a little bit too far, you can put in one and a half or even two units without even trying. So that's one of the downsides with Azalor is that the accuracy is less good because you're using basically a more concentrated solution. Um, don't be tempted to increase the volume of saline you put in to get around this problem because there is some evidence that it diffuses proportionately much further when it's more dilute. At least a couple of studies that I've come across that have said that. So that means you inject it and it just all floats away basically. So, if we think about dosages, if that's your 10 units dose, that's what you're going to use around the crow's feet most often, and occasionally using a 5 unit dose of Azalor. Um, in the forehead, you might, in a woman, be using 2.5 units, which is quite hard to control, but that's the right dose. And you can use 5 units in men in the forehead. For the glabella, it's similar. So your 10 unit dose in Braceris and in the medial corrugator, going down to um, two units, maybe in the lateral injections, or even down to one unit in the, f in, the, in, the t in the tail of corrugator. So if you remember anything from that, just remember that you're getting twice the effect 
from the same size volume of saline. So although that looks like a small injection, that's four units, and that would be the equivalent of two units, but it's actually 10 units of 10 spaywood units and five spaywood units. I hope that's helpful. If you can leave any comments or suggestions or um, your own experiences, we're always interested to hear them. So um, please comment below um, if you'd like to know anything else or just share an experience. Thanks.